Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So today, as per usual, let's go over Tesla, let's go over the market, let's figure out what is happening, what we can expect moving forward and all of that good stuff. There's a decent amount to talk about, so let's get into it. If you enjoyed, don't forget to hit that like button. This is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. And of course, my membership section on YouTube is live. The link is below. We're just barely almost just a few away from 200 members, which is great to see. So if you're interested, the link is down below $3 a month. I share my trade thoughts on Tesla updates, etc. <laughs> Moving into a dope Tesla closing the day. Uh, up ever so slightly putting us at uh, about 251 dollars per share which is not too bad compared to the market it's you know it's uh, underperforming the uh, tech sector but outperforming spy so you know it's kind of how you want to look at it but the way i'm looking at it today is as follows so if you're unaware of, if you're somehow living under a rock tesla of course did release um the delivery and uh, what's it called? Uh, production numbers. As you can see, unfortunately, they were both misses, right? They were both misses. They both missed what uh, Wall Street was estimating. I think Wall Street was around 455, roughly, for both. Obviously, Tesla is in at 435 and 430. So just keep that in mind. It was a miss, and that's why Tesla opened the day down about 3% or so on the day. But thankfully, that put us right at that 240-ish support level. Once again, we've got a beautiful bounce right off of that general support level and the 100-day moving average. And then, of course, off of that, we pretty much had a beautiful red to green movement, actually, which was great to see, right? We talked about how we're bouncing right off of it, right? We talked about the options for looking very, very bullish. You can see we'll take a look at it once again to see how it closed, but extremely bullish in the morning on that red, right? So bulls were buying, bulls were buying, right? So keep that in mind. Now, the thing to talk about here is going to be as follows. So let's go ahead, go ahead and go to the 65. Actually, we'll finish off on the daily. Let's finish the daily off, right? There's a few more things to talk about here. So we have the 21 emo getting rejected at that so far and we of course have the 50 day moving average which we're pretty much closing right at at the moment as well so we're kind of once again sandwiched in between this kind of general level right the 100 day moving average as support and then these two up here that we just talked about as of course a resistance now as if that wasn't enough we of course also have the volume profile area in this general kind of 255 ish level obviously very high we talked about this many times and that's of course where we're currently finding a little bit of rejection right thankfully it's not too bad and actually i would say it's a pretty okay close today in all honesty there's you know i'll give you the reasons i'll, I'll give you the conditions i'm looking for to turn bullish or bearish but as of right now pretty okay close in all honesty right again red to green which is great obviously we're still getting rejected by this level but we're still closing relatively close to the level we're not just collapsing well below it once again just getting a massive rejection it's only a mediocre rejection nothing too concerning at least so far so we'll see how we get some follow through tomorrow if we get any at all and how that overall plays out for tesla but that's kind of how i am seeing it as of right now over here on the daily right so not too shabby in all honesty not too bad let me go ahead and remove some of these indicators right uh, MACD obviously flipping a little bit less bearish, right? I wouldn't say it's flipping bullish or anything, but it's less bearish or at least not more bearish, which is good to see, right? This neutrality movement today is good. RSI is still kind of just following the charts. Not much to say about the RSI there. It's not giving us too much information as of yet. So we'll get into it once it does. But the main thing I'm looking for is as follows. There's two conditions, right? One condition that turns me more bullish. One condition that turns me more bearish. Let's start with the bullish one. Obviously, the most basic one is, of course, breaking above both of these indicators and looking like we're turning them into a support. That's number one. But the main thing I am personally going to be looking for is going to be breaking above this blue line, which I'll show you guys once again on the 65 minute chart. But this blue line right here, I'm actually going to move this one here. But this blue line right over here is what I want to break because this is kind of the downtrend that we are roughly in at the moment, right? And until we break above it, I'm, you know, again, in a very neutral situation because if we break above it, which is somewhere around close to 260, just shy of 260 as of right now, at least, right? That'll change, of course, throughout the days. But that's the level that I'd want to see it break in order to start being like, okay, maybe we can be a little bit more bullish now. It's looking a little bit more promising, right? However, on the flip side, for me to turn more bearish, It'll be pretty simple. A break below 240 is one of the levels. And of course, breaking below the 100 day moving average to those check marks is what I will start turning more bearish. Then, of course, I'll be looking for a retest of the overall channel, which is, you know, if we zoom out, right, the overall channel, which will be a retest somewhere close to around 235 ever so or maybe ever so uh, ever slightly lower than that potentially as well. But close to 235, give or take a few dollars, right, or points or whatever. Now, that's kind of what I am looking for. And that's kind of those situations and, you know, scenarios, if you will, that would have to occur for me to turn bearish or bullish so keep that in mind that's how i am personally perceiving it now let's go over to the 65 minute chart let's remove some of these indicators so it's not too cluttered and let's take a look at what is happening over here right 
So 65 right minute chart, we have, of course, still that potential inverted head and shoulders, which is, of course, a bullish pattern. And there's two kind of weird things to consider here that it's it's a little choppy, right? I'm not going to lie. It's not the prettiest looking inverted head and shoulders, right? At least the right shoulder is looking a little bit weird. But the way I'm looking at it is as follows. Assuming you want to take the route that this is, of course, a, an inverted head and shoulders, it still technically can be, right? This move today to the downside technically just set up the shoulder a little bit more securely, right? But more importantly, even though we broke below this neckline, which is, of course, an important level because we broke above the neckline here came back to retest it and bounced off of it which was looking pretty damn good so far we ended up coming back below it but we didn't actually close the candle below it on the 65 minute chart which i personally like right the fact that we couldn't or didn't rather close the candle below this blue line is not bad that's a pretty okay sign in my opinion and the fact that we ended up closing up you know relatively close to the high of the day of course the red to green as well is not too bad as well so technically in my opinion this uh, inverted head and shoulders pattern is still in play and all it's going to do is essentially take us all the way up to about that 260 level which is going to be that retest of this overall blue line again very close to 260 again the longer it takes the the, the obviously the line is on a slope so it'll get lower and lower lower right so it'll maybe go to like 259 and a half or 259 or 258 and a half right all every every so day uh every few days or so so take that into consideration right that target will slowly go down uh the longer it takes to get there but that's kind of the main thing i'll be looking at right now and again a break above this blue line is what i will personally want to be looking for in order to get above or in order to get a little bit more bullish now keep in mind we also have actually there's a picture i want to show you guys let me see if i can uh, let me go ahead and take this. Let me go here. There's the, actually a picture that I want to show you guys that I also need to share with my members. I completely forgot to do it. I was going to do it. I think it's this one. Um, yes, yeah, this one. This is a beautiful picture. This is what I want to show uh, everyone. Uh, so this one right here, right? So this is a seasonality, right? We already talked about seasonality many times. So it's not like it's completely new information, but this is a little bit more... Um, detailed i guess or you know it's more specific i guess right so we already know that obviously in october and september overall bearish months for tesla and of course overall the market as well right it's very you know questionable months to say the least but if we look at this picture as well this is, gives us a little bit more information you can see right it played out in september pretty well right september you can see it starts off neutral then we get a beautiful rally for september into a massive fall that kind of cancels out that rally and we did kind of get that right and now looking into october you can see you know, October usually tends to start off with a bit of a rally, right? A bit of green, a little bit of euphoria into essentially another sell-off similar to September, right? Pretty much erasing all those gains, if not more. And then somewhere around mid-October, ish of course and this isn't don't take this to the t right this is just a rough example right it doesn't even i mean it doesn't even have to play out like this for this time who knows this is just kind of the average if you will but the point is the fact that you know september start or october rather starts bullish then goes pretty bearish around until around the mid ish of october give or take and then from there we start finding a base and we start rallying and then we have a beautiful run until uh, the end of the year so this is kind of what i've been talking about for a while you guys heard me talk about this many many times and this is roughly what i will be expecting so this is why i don't think and i told them i've told my members this many times i don't think we're going to be you know skyrocketing into new all-time highs or even skyrocketing in general for another couple of weeks or so but once that happens and once we're summer are in my opinion, as we're around the middle of October, that's when I think things can probably start basing, things can start turning around. And I think that's when we can start getting a little bit more bullish. So take that for what it's worth, but we'll of course see if that's actually how the market wants to play out, but just important information to consider regardless. But with all that being said, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to hit that like button. And of course, as usual, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.